start in the United States, and it was a dizzying full first day in office for Donald Trump at the start of his second term as president. He signed more executive orders, but his key announcement was the creation of a huge artificial intelligence project called Stargate. He called the plan the biggest project of its kind in history. It will see the private sector invest $500 billion in AI infrastructure in the United States over the next four years. Mr. Trump said it would create around 100,000 jobs in America. The initiative expands existing plans to build huge data centers. Mr. Trump also sought to justify his decision to pardon more than 1,500 supporters who stormed the US Capitol building four years ago. The president described their punishments as ridiculous and excessive. He rounded off his day by continuing to dismantle government diversity programs. A White House memo told federal agencies to put all staff in diversity, equality and inclusion roles on leave and to develop plans to lay them off. Our North America correspondent Merlin Thomas reports now from Washington. Nice to see you. Some very familiar faces. President Trump is back and wants to make sure everyone knows. We had a great first term, but we're going to have an even better second term. And I think we're going to do things that people would be shocked at. And many have been shocked at the presidential pardon so far. First, nearly all the January 6th rioters. And now to Ross Ulbricht, who founded a dark web marketplace. After signing a raft of executive orders on Inauguration Day, he used his first full day in office to announce what he called the biggest AI project in history. Stargate is a new US-based artificial intelligence company formed by three technology giants. A new American company that will invest $500 billion at least in AI infrastructure in the United States and, move, and very very quickly moving very rapidly, creating over 100,000 American jobs almost immediately. The planned announcement turned into a more off-the-cuff press conference. Are you open to Elon buying TikTok? I would be if he wanted to buy it, yeah. And on your inauguration? I'd like Larry to buy it, too. I have the right to make a deal. Never, by the way, Russia never would have gone into Ukraine. I had a very strong understanding with Putin. Earlier that day, President Trump attended an inaugural prayer service. Occasionally, clergy are subtle in their sermons to new presidents, but not this time. Millions have put their trust in you. And as you told the nation yesterday, you have felt the providential hand of a loving God. In the name of our God, I ask you to have mercy upon the people in our country, who are scared now. But President Trump wasn't impressed. What did you think of the service? What did you think? Did you like it? Did you find it exciting? Not too exciting, was it? I didn't think it was a good service, no. Thank you very much. Thank you, Press. Thank they you, Press. Much, they could do much better. Thank you. Do you have to talk on your phone? No, but I think I might put it there. On Wednesday, the work continues, with further meetings and his first major TV interview since becoming president. Merlin Thomas, BBC News, Washington. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Mr. President. Well, CBS News correspondent Jared Hill is on Capitol Hill in Washington. He told me more about President Trump's efforts to repeal diversity and inclusion targets. So what we're seeing at this point is, uh, according to a memo that went out just overnight, that President Trump is directing anybody who is involved in any sort of role uh, centered around diversity, equity and inclusion, promoting those initiatives. They are now going to be on paid leave here in Washington starting by the end of today. Any sort of training that is centered around improving diversity, equity and inclusion within the federal government and the federal workforce is going to be ending as well. Uh, in the future, it seems as though the effort really is to not just put these on pause or on hold, but to end them all together. When this comes to the private sector, you know, whenever we're looking at kind of <clears throat> how federal government initiatives impact the private sector, there is this general idea that this is a trickle-down effect, that if the federal government does one thing, then over time it would be likely that the private companies would do something similar. We've already seen 
a number of major corporations across the U.S. Uh, roll back some of those efforts to improve diversity, equity, and inclusion within their workforce. Uh, the question will be if this continues as well after these initiatives from the uh, federal government. Also, on his first full day, he was defending pardoning those January the 6th rioters. How has that gone down? So from what we've seen, there have been a number of Republicans, uh, a handful on Capitol Hill, who have said that this isn't necessarily what they wanted to see happen. But there hasn't really been this massive outpouring of uh, condemnation from within his own party. In fact, a number of members have deflected uh, saying, you know, what about the things that Joe Biden did when it came to pardoning either whether it was his family or not going after, as they see it, some of the protesters from the summer of 2000. Uh, and 21, why didn't they go after them? So what we're seeing here is a lot of deflection from within the Republican Party. Obviously, uh, Democrats are essentially up in arms over this one, especially when we're talking about the numbers of people who were either convicted of or charged of crimes that were related directly to physically harming law enforcement officers here on Capitol Hill back on January 6th. And looking ahead to what might happen later in the day, I understand he's got his first big TV interview with Fox News. Yes, yeah, so he has a TV interview with Fox News. Um, he's been doing a lot of 